Hello everyone, welcome to this short little tutorial. My name is Tell Stewart, and today I want to show you guys what it's like editing raw DNG files from either the Black Magic or uh, the 5D Mark III with Magic Lantern or even the Red. Um, which I think the Red is a little bit different, I'm not sure. I've never worked with the Red, but today I'm going to show you guys what it's like editing DNG files from the 5D Mark III. Now, I got to work a little bit with the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, and the workflow was exactly the same. Uh, the files were a little bit larger, and I was able to pull off just about the same look. But of course, the clarity is a little bit better with the Blackmagic, but that's just because it's uh, 2.5K versus 1080, which 1080 is great. So in the description, I've included a Dropbox link of footage that I shot from the 5D Mark III, and I even included a short clip of the Blackmagic. I'm giving you the raw files so you can play with them and see for yourself what it's like to be able to edit using this process. So if you want to download those, you're welcome to, and follow along. Again, the links are in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This right here is an image sequence, a little short video I shot, me and my wife walking with our little baby. As you can see, there's a ton of individual pictures. And uh, if you're not familiar with the workflow, it might be kind of confusing of what to do and how to get this into a timeline. You can't just put an image sequence right into Final Cut or Premiere. You have to put it through something. In this case, we are going to put it into After Effects. But before we put it into After Effects and turn it into a video, we are going to color these individual pictures. So let's go ahead and get started. Now right now I'm in Adobe Bridge and we're going to be using Camera Raw. But you can do the same thing that I'm going to show you in Aperture. And so if you prefer Aperture over Bridge and Camera Raw, go ahead and use that. Uh, the coloring techniques are all pretty much the same when you get to that point. So we're going to go ahead and make sure all the clips in this folder are selected and then open Camera Raw. Okay, so here we go. This is our image sequence. And I'm going to go and find a frame that uh, kind of you can see us a little bit better. When I was shooting this, I intentionally underexposed just a little bit just to maintain the detail that we had in these clouds. Um, but I was looking at the histogram to make sure that none of the detail was lost in the shadow. So we have a little bit of detail. It will be a little bit grainy, but it shouldn't be too noticeable. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go up and select all. When we hit the select all button, it selects all the pictures, and now whatever changes we make, it makes all the pictures in this folder, which is awesome. Um, so the first thing I like to do is just kind of bring the shadows up. Um, and then I like to bring the highlights down just for fun. And then bring the exposure up. Now, as you can see, in my shirt and my face right here, it's a little grainy, so we're going to bring the shadows down and try and kind of bring that detail back in without making it grainy. Um, everything looks good there. I'm still a little dark in the, my histogram. I can come up a little bit. That looks about good. I'm still a little grainy. I can go into the luminance and the noise reduction and kind of bring it up a little bit. You don't want to do this too much or it start, starts to look a little bit plastic. But you can do this a little bit. I'm going to bring it up to about 26. Uh, okay, let's go, uh, go back to our picture. I'm going to bring the tint back down. For some reason, the 5D Mark III it is a little bit on the pink side, so I just like to bring in uh, those greens back in. And then I like to warm up the picture. I, I like warm, really warm shots. Um, I just, they look nice. Uh, I like to bring the clarity up to about 30. Um, kind of gives it a nice, sharp look kind of around edges and stuff like that um, and that's about it the picture all looks really good right now another thing that I've, I've played with in the past is the the graduated filter where you can kinda play with these pixels down here and uh, you know kinda darken them a little bit or, or sharpen them even more or even warm them up even more um, up 
contrast just a tad. Now I th I can't I don't know. I think if you let's see. If you do the graduated filter, you have to select all you have to synchronize and I believe it's spot removal. And if you click on that, it will copy that graduated filter across the board. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And then you'll see all these images will be changed to the color that we just made. Now, this isn't permanent. I can go and erase everything that I did with a click of a button. There you go. See the that uh, the color come in. So now what do you do? We need to go and turn this image sequence into a video so we can put it into Premiere or Final Cut. So what I like to do is open it in After Effects. Now the great thing about After Effects is it reads that metadata that we just changed coloring the picture, doing that initial color grade. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this and I'm going to import the image sequence. Now that shot on the camera, I shot at 23.97 frames a second. So you want to make sure that when you import an image sequence that you bring it in at the right frame rate. So what we're going to do is go to um, After Effects, Preferences, and Import. In here, you want to make sure this says 23.97.6. If you've shot that frame rate, if you haven't shot that frame rate, uh, if you shot 30 or 29.97, you change it to that. In this case, I shot 23.976, and I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, I'm going to go and import the image sequence. You go to File, Import, or Import File. Um, let's see, what do I name this? Path 2. So we find the file that the image sequence is in. In this case, it is mark three raw tests and part two and footage and path two and in here if you select the first image in the sequence and make sure camera raw sequence is checked then it will import the rest of the frames as your sequence go ahead and hit open it'll bring this up again just hit OK And now, as you can see here, this is our image sequence. If you click on it, you should be able to play through it. Although, oh, there you go. You should be able to play through it, although it wouldn't play that fast right now. But uh, there you go, that's our video. Um, all we need to do now is export it. If you click up on your image sequence and drag it down to your composition, it'll create a new composition, the exact length that you need of that clip. Then you go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And in here you just change to your settings. I like to go to Apple ProRes 422HQ just at first while I may want to change a little bit of the color later I like to maintain a little bit of the high bit rate that HQ brings uh, you just choose your location in this case I'll just choose the desktop hit, hit save and hit render and there you go after it renders you'll be able to put that file into Premiere or Final Cut or whatever other editor you use rendering these files out takes a little bit of time thanks for watching this tutorial please subscribe and See you guys next time.